What's up everyone, Tara Roberts here with Fantasy Pros bringing you my top 10 waiver wire ads for week eight. Before I get into the list, if you want a chance to win a glorious fantasy football championship belt for your league, courtesy of our good friends at Trophy Smack, the number one destination for epic fantasy football trophies, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Drop a comment below on this video and that's it. We'll be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so make sure you turn on those notifications so you can claim your prize. Now let's go ahead and dive right in. Number 10, Taysom Hill. I have been hesitant to put Taysom Hill on this list because the uptick in production is definitely because the Saints are using him as an actual tight end. He's still getting his normal gadget work, but he's also getting more receiving work than he's seen all season. Jawan Johnson has been out with a calf injury, and as a result, the Saints have finally opted to use Taysom Hill in a regular role. Over the past two weeks, he's had a total of 11 receptions on 13 targets as an actual tight end and has had double digit fantasy points. He's actually been a reliable option. It remains to be seen what this will look like when Johnson returns, but it's worked well and the Saints could opt to continue Hill's usage. It's not the most clear cut ad, so that's why he's at the back of the list because we don't know what's going to happen if Johnson comes back this week. But if Johnson is out, I would feel oddly comfortable starting Hill. Number nine, Derek Carr. Derek Carr's season as a whole has been underwhelming, but he's actually been a fine streaming option when healthy. Carr suffered a shoulder injury in week three. He played through that injury for two weeks, and he was both visibly and statistically clearly unable to push the ball downfield. He had less than 200 yards in all of his games that were affected by the injury. But when Carr has been healthy, Carr has surpassed 300 passing yards in all but one game his week two matchup against the Carolina defense that has been pretty stingy in terms of yards given up to opposing quarterbacks. Carr is a high volume quarterback that loves to throw the ball deep, and he's got a solid receiving core to do so with Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid serving as an excellent tandem. And then there's also Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara for more intermediate and short yardage plays. It's a good situation. And his upcoming schedule is pass friendly, so Carr is a fine streaming option for the next three games until the Saints bye week. Number eight, Rashid Shaheed. We talked about Derek Carr, so let's talk about adding his favorite deep threat receiver, Rashid Shaheed. Rashid Shaheed is a very specific role player. He is not exclusively used downfield, but his clear bread and butter when watching games is the deep ball, and you can see why. All you need to do is just get the ball in Shahid's general vicinity, and he will literally snatch it by any means necessary. It is beautiful to watch. The only problem is that makes his role very touchdown dependent. He's not exactly the most reliable start in the world, but he's a guy that you can plug into your lineup with the realistic expectation for 15 plus fantasy point upside. We talked about the upcoming schedule being pass friendly for the Saints. Shahid is a streaming option in those matchups. Number seven, Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne is a player who can actually be the Patriots wide receiver one when given the opportunity. It's just a matter of Bill Belichick giving him that opportunity. But perhaps we've seen a shift because for the past two weeks, Bourne has led the Patriots receiving core and been very productive. In week six, Bourne had 10 receptions on 11 targets for 89 yards. The yardage isn't ideal, but you could just write that off as being a good matchup. But he had six receptions on seven targets for 63 yards in a touchdown in week seven. Maybe it's not the matchup. Maybe he is finally the wide receiver one for the Patriots. And we've finally seen his snap count rise above 80% for the past three weeks. Perhaps Bill Belichick actually saw the light and has committed to Bourne as the wide receiver one. It might feel a bit icky rostering him, but Bourne could be a weekly flex option moving forward. Number six, Amari DiMercato. I film a players to cut video for Fantasy Pro's YouTube channel every week, and Amari DiMercato was a cut candidate in shallow leagues, but he was a player that I felt was a hold in deeper leagues. The reason why I felt like he was a hold in deeper leagues was his snap count. Despite having just three touches, DiMercato led the Cardinals backfield in snaps last week. There really didn't appear to be any rhyme or reason as to why the lack of touches versus the high snap count. DiMercato had one carry for five yards in the first quarter, and then he didn't touch the ball again until the third quarter, and then his final touch came at the end of the fourth quarter. It didn't really make a ton of sense, so it felt like you needed to hold on to him because it was a very real possibility that he would have increased touches in week seven, and that is exactly what occurred. 
DeMarcado had 13 carries for 58 yards and four receptions for 17 yards in week seven. Damian Williams and Keontae Ingram had a combined one single carry. This usage could flip, so spin fab wisely. But with James Conner on IR, DeMarcado should be rostered. Number five, Tajay Spears. It is easy to forget about players on bye weeks, but do not forget about Tajay Spears. His roster percentage did jump, but it's at just 42% in Yahoo leagues and 35% in ESPN leagues with the bye week leaving many fantasy managers having to make a difficult choice of holding him, leaving him on waivers, or cutting him for players that they needed to actually put into their starting lineup. Many fantasy managers lost faith because his week six performance was very disappointing before the bye week, but that's expected. Spears is the handcuff, but he's a handcuff that is low end flex option that you can put in in a pinch. But again, he is a handcuff. This is Derrick Henry's team, but that is why we were adding him. He's a high end handcuff to an aged running back. Rostering Spears is a solid choice. Number four, Dalton Kincaid. Dawson Knox is getting wrist surgery and we have no timeline on his return. The only reason Dalton Kincaid wasn't really a strong roster before this was because the productivity at tight end splitting with another tight end, it just doesn't work. On top of that, it wasn't like the situation was where Kincaid was going to push Knox out. The Bills just paid Dawson Knox last year. Knox was always going to be involved and Kincaid was supposed to push more into that slot role, but the Bills were rotating guys in like Deontay Hardy and Khalil Shakir. So there just really wasn't enough volume. But with Knox out, Kincaid should be a weekly starting tight end in all fantasy formats. Kincaid was eight of eight for 75 yards this week. Now beware, this isn't a league winning situation. It's not like either one of these guys were really lighting it up. Dawson Knox had less than five fantasy points in every single game since week three. The only time he was above five points was in week two against Vegas. Kincaid was below 10 fantasy points the entire season before this week, so we can do the math here pretty easily. He's a potential 10 to 12 fantasy point tight end on a weekly basis, but hey, that's a top 10 tight end. He is worth an ad. Number three, Josh Downs. I've had Josh Downs on this list a couple of times before. Rookies that pop early are a strong ad on their own merit, but adding Downs became an even bigger priority when Anthony Richardson went down with an injury. The connection between Downs and Minshew is undeniable. Downs had his third straight game with double digit fantasy points and second straight game with a touchdown. Downs had five receptions on seven targets for 125 yards and a touchdown, very similar stats to week six, with the yardage being the huge difference maker here. The upcoming schedule isn't ideal, but given Downs' clear role within this offense, we can set the schedule concerns aside and grab Downs with confidence. He is a flex option moving forward. Number two, Kyler Murray. In leagues where you can hold players in IR spots, Kyler Murray has likely been rostered since the beginning of the season. But if your league doesn't allow that, Kyler Murray might be on waivers. Joshua Dobbs has been admirable in his absence, but there is no question the Cardinals would prefer to start a healthy Kyler Murray. Murray is set to make his likely return in the next two weeks. And quite frankly, he's not coming back to a bad offensive situation. Arizona's run game has been good, despite the fact that they've been hobbled together in terms of a backfield since James Conner went down. The receiving core features Marquise Brown, who had a fantastic and highly productive connection with Murray last year. Michael Wilson has shown promise. The tight ends have been decently productive. This could work. Arizona's schedule isn't very pass friendly overall, but at least the playoff schedule does feature tough defenses that you would prefer to throw on rather than attack on the ground. Murray could be that back half hero for your fantasy team. Number one, Daryl Henderson. This has been one of the strangest waiver wire ad seasons. I find myself advocating for players that we thought had no place in the NFL anymore. And that is the case with Daryl Henderson. Henderson was cut by the Rams last season couldn't find a permanent home and failed to get another carry after his departure from the Rams. He then failed to find a team during the offseason, but the Rams lost both Kyron Williams and Ronnie Rivers in the same week and had to find depth. So Sean McVay called up the guy that he literally cut exactly a year ago and Henderson was immediately signed. Henderson stepped up as the Rams RB1 this week. 
It's not extremely shocking when we consider Henderson spent his entire career with McVeigh and knew the system, so the transition was seamless. Expectations were low for the Rams heading into the 2023 season, but the Rams have been strong on offense, and with Kyron Williams set to miss at least three more games on IR, Henderson is the Rams' likely lead back through the Rams by week. I know it feels like something that we should be cautious with, and I don't disagree because we've been acquiring guys off waivers that turn out to actually be bust, but I think that Henderson is going to be well worth the ad here. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to Fantasy Pros. And remember, if you want a chance to win a glorious fantasy football championship belt for your league, courtesy of our good friends at Trophy Smack, the number one destination for epic fantasy football trophies, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Drop a comment below on this video and that's it. We'll be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so make sure you turn on those notifications so you can claim your prize.